The problem with row reduction is that we can go on forever, even if we do not make any mistakes. So, when do we stop? What is our aim in this row reduction procedure? When are we ready? In this video, we will learn what we want to achieve when row reducing a matrix, the so-called echelon form or the reduced echelon form. So, let us look at a few examples of uh, augmented matrices. It's not so important what the numbers exactly are. The only thing which is important is whether I have a zero, whether I have an element non-zero, or any element. So, zero will be zero. A square will designate a number which is not equal to zero, any number not equal to zero, and a star maybe any number. So, let's take a look at the first augmented matrix C's. This one is ready, cannot. Uh, reduce further, make it easier. Uh, the one below that, uh, in that one we could reduce further because we can eliminate this non-zero element over here using the first row. The first one is ready, second one is not, and you can see that if you make a stash like this around those first non-zero elements. If you have a stash then you are ready, and here, well, I, I have a stash that uh, would fall down quite far, so here we are not ready. Let's look at the next example. We have our uh, 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 blocks, our squares again. Here we can form a stairs. So we are ready, we cannot reduce further. Uh, the steps are a bit broader, but that's okay. And in th this example over here, I can try to make a stairs, but then it goes wrong, I have to go back. And you see I'm not ready, but of course, because we could eliminate this element over here. So that's the idea. If, you're, if you can form this stair-like structure in your augmented matrix, then you're done with your row reduction. If you cannot, you could go on further. Let's formalize that a bit. Well, in order to define what my stairs is, I need those blocks, I need the squares, I need to tell you uh, what the squares are. Well, what are they? Those are the first elements in the row which are non-zero, and those are called the leading entries. So the leading entry of a row is the first element in that particular row, which is not zero. So, if you look, for example, at the uh, first matrix, the, the first element is not zero, so that will be my leading entry. And then the second row, first we have a zero, so that is not a leading entry. And this one is. And let's look at one more example, and this one here. Uh, this uh, first element is already non-zero, so that's a leading entry. Here we have zero, not a leading entry, zero. For not a leading entry, ah, a block, which is not zero, so there we have the leading entry. And uh, for the third row, the first block is already the leading entry. So you can easily see what leading entries are. Well, when are we done with our row reduction uh, procedure? If our matrix is in echelon form. So what does that mean? Uh, first of all, all rows which contain only zero should be below. Okay, that's easy because you can always change those rows and second uh, uh, the leading entry uh, should always be to the right of a leading entry above it so if we start with the uh, matrix uh, matrix over here here we have our first row with the leading entry then the leading entry of the second uh, row should be to the right of that and look this uh, leading entry uh, of the second row is indeed to the right of the leading entry of the first row. Let's look at this third augmented matrix. First leading entry is the first row is always fine. And then the second leading entry of the second row is not to the right of the uh, first row. So this ma augmented matrix is not in echelon form. So that's the idea. You're done with your row reduction if all uh, leading entries are to the right of each other, so they form like stairs. Well, let's do that in an explicit example. So, here we have our augmented matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, leading entries are the 1 and the 4 at this moment. They are not to the right of each other, so the matrix is not in echelon form. So, we can do a row reduction step like minus 4 over here, and then we have the uh, 1, 2, 3 stays the same, uh, minus 4 times 1 equals minus 4 plus 4 equals zero, 0, uh, 
minus 8 plus 5 equals minus 3 and minus 12 plus 6 equals minus 6. So we get as our new second row 0 minus 3 minus 6. And now the leading entries are the 1 and the minus 3. The minus 3 is to the right of the 1, which means that now our matrix is in uh, echelon form. Could we do some more reduction steps uh, with preserving the echelon form? So can I try to make my augmented matrix even simpler whilst preserving the echelon form? Well, yes, we can. For example, we can divide the second row by minus 3. Then we get a 1, 2 over here. And we still have an echelon form. And we can make it even easier by creating a zero over here, so subtracting the second row twice from the first row. And then we are over here. And uh, you can read off the solution now, of course, minus one, two. Uh, and what have we achieved now by doing those two operations? Well, first of all, our augmented matrix is still in echelon form. But we did something more. We made all leading entries equal to one, and we made zeros above all leading entries. Well, if your matrix is in echelon form and you have those two more conditions, then uh, uh, your matrix in, is in reduced echelon form. Well, as you have seen, uh, the echelon form is not unique. You can continue row reduction. The reduced echelon form of an augmented matrix is unique. If you are there, you are really done with your row reduction process. You cannot get uh, any further. So when solving linear systems, your aim is uh, either echelon form, then you can already sol start solving your system, or reduce echelon form, which is, and if you are reduced at reduced echelon form, you really cannot get any further. And final definition, if you are uh, in reduced echelon form, the leading entries are called the pivots. So here we ha have our reduced echelon form and our leading entries, and the Place where, uh, where they are, those are called the pivot positions or the pivots. Well, notice that you could already read off those pivot positions earlier because you can see them here already and you can see them here already. So you see, for reading off where the pivots are, your echelon form is actually already sufficient. However, if you define what the pivot is, we would like to define that in something which is unique. So that is why the pivots are defined in terms of the reduced echelon form, you can already find them if you have only the echelon form of your augmented matrix.